So this is uh, Disorders of the Eyes and Ears Part 2. So let's look at common drugs that we use. Um, antibiotics. This can be ointment or drops for the eyes or oral or drops for the ear, uh, depending on where the infection is. But remember, this is going to be to treat something bacterial. Antihistamines, this prevents an allergic reaction. So this, if we've got uh, allergic uh, conjunctivitis, we can do that. Um, or runny nose kind of stuff can kind of go along with getting um, fluid in the ears. So we may need to, to treat that. Um, analgesics, sometimes the ear infections can be pretty painful. So we may need to do um, an analgesic with those kids or if they've had a surgery on the eyes or the ears. So visual uh, problems uh, are refractive disorders. These, this is near farted, nearsightedness or farsightedness. And it's exactly what it says. Nearsighted, you can see near, which means you can't see well far. Farsighted, you see well far, so you can't see well near. Um, and this just has to do with this, how deep the eye is and how the uh, picture comes back on it, whether it hits or doesn't hit um, correctly onto uh, the retina. Um, so this is easily corrected with glasses. When kids don't see well, they don't realize it. They don't know that they're not seeing what everybody else is. They've never seen any other way. So asking them if things are blurry or if they don't see well, they usually will say, no, I see just fine because they have no idea what else they could see. Um, so anyway, so near and farsighted. Astigmatism, this is the cornea is not nicely rounded and shaped. It's got some weird stuff to it. So it's like looking at one of those uh, mirrors in the funny house where it, it, things kind of, they're big on top and small and, and um, just out of proportion and that's the way the child sees which makes figuring out where that toy they're reaching for they're not quite sure where it is um, strabismus this is misalignment of the eyes uh, so can be crossed but can go pretty much any way that the eyes just are not aligned correctly Amblyopia, most people call this lazy eye. So this is weak muscles in one eye and it will start to drift. Both strabismus and amblyopia, um, a lot of times the problem is weak muscles in one eye. So we will patch the good eye, make them use that bad eye to strengthen those muscles. Nystagmus, the rapid jerking movements, congenital cataracts, a cloudy lens so you can't see through the lens so we've got to take that lens out for that child to be able to see they will put in a new lens um, but they like to let the child grow a little bit so they're going to have very thick glasses until they put a new lens in so signs and symptoms of a visual problem well at any age just a dull vacant stare where they're not looking at you or anything in their environment is not normal. That's a concern. Um, an infant should be able to fix and follow. I always say focus and track, whichever. Um, but if you get right in front of them, remember they they have a fairly limited uh, area where they see. But if you get right in front of them, they should focus on you and they should follow a little bit. Once they lose you, you're gone. Um, they're not going to try and find you. But they should be able to, to fix and follow or track and, and focus and track. Um, so if they're not making eye contact, if you shine a light and they don't react, they don't blink, um, don't try and look at your face and do what you're doing, that's all concerns. Toddlers and older kids, they're going to rub it, try and make that blurriness go away, maybe shut one eye, squint or cover one eye. Um, lots of blinking, if they're holding things too close or sitting too close, or just general clumsiness. They can't see well, and so they bump into things, they trip over things, uh, or they are always tip their head or push their head forward, things like that are all signs that they need to be referred and have their eyes tested. 
otitis media. So this is our ear infection. We can have an acute otitis media. So we've got bacterial, purulent stuff in there. An otitis media with effusion. So this is thin, clear fluid in there. Or ex otitis externa. This is usually called swimmer's ear. This is the external ear canal. Um, so risk factors, well, eustachian tube issues, eustachian tube dysfunction, recurrent upper respiratory infections, kids who go to daycare get exposed to more things um, if they've had it before, and then smoking in the household. Smoke in the house tends to just make everything irritated, and they're just prone for more um, infections, ear infections, respiratory infections. So here's what we're looking for. When we look with the, the um, otoscope, the eardrum, you can pretty much see through it. We're seeing the bone on the inside there, right? You're, those three little bones. There should be a light reflex. And they call it a pearly white. This one, you can't see through. Um, so, right, the opaque and um, it's probably filled with purulent fluid. This one's filled with thin fluid. So this is the effusion. This is usually not infected yet, but anywhere that you have that fluid sitting, um, it's at risk for developing a bacterial infection. The treatment for ear infections right now, um, the recommendation is to not treat for about 72 hours because most of them start out like this and then will clear up on their own. Most of them are just viral or just irritation and some fluid. Um, so if the child looks sick, they're running a fever and they look really sick, um, we'll treat them under six months. We'll treat them with an antibiotic. But other than that, the recommendation is to wait about three days and see how it looks. That's hard to convince a parent. Um, but most of them don't need antibiotics. Most of them will clear up. And we're trying to not overuse antibiotics. Um, otitis externa, often called swimmer's ear, this is the external auditory canal. This is not looking at the eardrum. This is not the tympanic membrane. You can't see in there. Um, they might have a middle ear infection with it, but this is external. These are really painful. Um, and most of the time, these we treat with drops, where most of the time a middle ear, we treat with an oral antibiotic. So how about hearing? Um, hearing acuity is defined as the softest intensity, so the softest sound perceived. We measure how loud it is in decibels, um, then how high or low it is is the frequency. So that's the, the pitch is frequency. The loudness is decibels. Um, often when you fill up your ear with fluid, you don't hear well. So this can be transient. It will go away or it can be permanent. It can be one side or it can be bilateral. The problem is kids have to hear to develop speech. So there really is kind of a sensitive period uh, you know, between like six months and 18 months, we're in there. If they're getting a lot of ear infections, it's going to interfere with their speech development. And so that's, um, I'm, I just told you we try and not over treat ah, because we don't want to overuse antibiotics, but we also want kids to hear so that they can develop speech. So when we do talk about kids having hearing loss, there's three different types, um, conductive, uh, sensory neural, or mixed. Right, conductive means those bones that are supposed to vibrate in there aren't. It's not coming from the sound waves in the air to the vibration of the bones to triggering the cochlea. So it's somewhere in that conduction. Sensory neuro, once it's hit the cochlea, now it's going up the nerves to the brain for processing. So if there's a nerve problem, it's sensory neuro, and if it's mixed, it's got some of both. Um, and I just said all that. So just so that you remember, right, external canal, here's the middle ear with those bones, here's the cochlea that's sending it up um, the nerves.